because I have absolutely no idea where it's coming from. submarine friends we're out at Slocan Lake today we drove through a bunch of smoky highways to get here uh, we arrived last night so we could do a test nice and early this morning the weather forecast told us it was going to be calm today and it's just fantastic it's just a beautiful day here super calm so we're going to tow the submarine to uh, right out from Silverton actually where it's uh, 980 to a thousand feet deep and we're going to send the sub down unmanned it's tethered with a rope attached to a uh, floating buoy and all I have to do is pull on the rope and it sends air to the ballast tanks which makes it come back to the surface. So wish us luck. I really got this thing tied down. It's the first trip for the new trailer so it Okay, now it's hip waiter time. To get my wife on this lake, you'd have to add 50 feet to this. <laughs> we got the, the living room on the water. That's fantastic. We broke the little wheel on the front of the trailer. Okay. And what it does is we need a strap between the trailer and the boat, or the truck, so that we can get the trailer really far in the water. Right. Otherwise the whole truck would be in the water. Right. So I made a little wheel, but there's gaps between the concrete blocks here. And the little wheel broke off. So, you know, that's what you gotta love about small towns. I asked this, just asked a random guy, do you weld? Really? He's like, oh, my dad does, I'll get that fixed. It's getting fixed right now. Yeah, like yesterday. <laughs> no, right now. Or, or just now. Yeah, right this now. This morning. Yeah. You just gotta love it here, hey? barges that were hauling the trains. Or it could have been a barge itself. Yeah. Look here, look, 
barge. I mean, with the mining history on this lake, the barge history. Yeah, I mean, there's a barge on shore just you know, here someplace. It actually starts above water. It goes out at 40 feet. And it's got a like a 1920s era compressor. Oh, I it. saw a video of that. Yeah, yeah. So as soon as we get to our target depth, we'll just stop. I'll transfer to the little boat. Okay. And then I'll do my thing and, and let it sink. Out. And then we'll we'll pull away a bit in case for some reason it decides to surface. It does not surface where the buoy is. Right. It surfaces 500 feet to the side because okay. it's coming up so hard because you. You give it enough air to break free from the mud and everything yeah. else. Well, you know, a diver, it's expanding all the way. The air in the ballast tank, so it just comes up as hard right. as it can. And it does not come up in a straight line. So we'll pull away from it and just keep an eye on the buoy, and then we'll let it sit for an hour. Okay. And then I'll go back out, pull on the line. And then again, we have to get out of Dodge, because we don't want to hit your boat with it. Yeah. And wherever it pops up, we'll retrieve it. Okay. It's that simple. Hi submarine friends, we're out here in the middle of Slocan Lake and my friend Brian Ned Whitney here has very generously brought this magnificent boat out. I mean look at this thing. <laughs> I'm so spoiled today. So this is Brian who comes and helps me from time to time and he's also my safety diver. He can go quite deep. How deep do you dive? I, I can go past 300 feet, 400. Yeah but it's flashing so I mean it's lost. Okay so, temporarily. well you see we're in the deep spot. Yep. Right? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. So we're at our target depth. Um, according to the chart, it's 978 feet-ish here. So the sonar says it's not, but we're going to trust the chart. It's the deepest point, no matter what it is. So I'm just going to get on here and do my thing. Valves. There it goes. Away she goes. Hopefully it comes back up. <laughs> Did it take to hit the bottom? It took 14 minutes to reach the bottom. And just a fun fact that we were just talking about, the hatch right now has 50 tons of weight trying to push it through the, the seat. So the time is up and we're heading back to the float right now. 
and uh, I'm going to jump out into my inflatable boat and go retrieve this thing. Uh, fingers crossed. Brian's not worried, but I'm a little nervous. So as soon as the sub starts to come to the surface, just back away 500 feet or something just to uh, make sure that it doesn't come up and hit the boat. Okay. Because I have absolutely no idea where it's coming up. Okay. <laughs> So the sub came up, which is a great sign. Now just doing the retrieval. Seems to be angled because of the ballast tank in the rear. I could probably come over to you. Anyway, so let's head back. All hooked up? All hooked up. I call it a success. I obviously had the valve to the aft ballast tank turned down too low. I was trying to balance it manually and it didn't work. But I just hand pumped it up and it worked fine, so we're heading back to shore. I mean, the sub came home, so... I say that's a success. That's an epic success yeah. in my book. Yeah. <laughs> Little fiberglass repair is not too serious. So what's the plan now that you've got your thousand foot test successfully? Well, it looks like I'm doing some fiberglass repair first. And now I have to put all the bits and pieces in that I took out. I took the expensive stuff out of the submarine in case it didn't come back to the surface. <laughs> and some of those parts are shared with my ROV and I need the ROV to go get it if it doesn't come up. So now we have to put it back together and I guess we'll go to Premier Lake maybe next week or something and uh, we'll go and do a dive. So all in all I have to say that it was a complete success. I'm completely happy with it. Tomorrow I'm going to start putting all the bits and pieces on like the light and the scrubbers and all the stuff that it needs 
and next week I think we'll be diving. I think Premier Lake will be our starting dive and uh, from there we move forward. Ciao for now.